Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of To The Point Podcast. Hope you guys are all doing well on this Friday. Um, Obviously, today we're hoping that uh, it was going to go back to orange. At least I was. Uh, I didn't get that lucky. But, um, you know, we're we're in a good mood. um, I'm in a good mood anyway. Sports are are on TV. We got the Super Bowl in in a little over a week. Um, NHL is on every night. The NBA is in full force. Baseball starting to get some headlines. So, you know, it, it's great time to be doing this podcast. There's never, you know, there's never a dull moment here. Um, you know, UFC every other weekend coming up. So it's going to be locked and loaded here until the point. And um, today I thought, you know, we're a little over three weeks into the season. Um, each division is different because there's one really a COVID division where teams haven't been able to play. Uh, and, but I thought I'd update you on standings, how I think teams are looking and uh, where, where, where the teams stand right now. So I'm going to go through the East Canadian West and central today. Just go through the teams that have really, uh, I've been impressed with out of the gate teams that have kind of struggled and I'll, you know, just give you a breakdown of where the teams look in the standings right now. Uh, every team that hasn't been ravaged by COVID is about eight to 10 games in right now. Um, we got like, uh, Vancouver has played 10 games. Toronto has played nine in the Canadian division. So, a lot, some, some divisions are different. Like I said, it's different across the world. The United uh, Canada hasn't had a huge COVID issue yet. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets had a slight one with Tucker Pullman testing positive. Um, but, you know, we've seen Carolina have to shut down their operations. Obviously, Dallas, uh, Nashville had a few positive cases. Uh, so it's, it's been a mess in, in that division. But we'll, we'll get into that as, as we get there. So I thought I'd start out with, with the best division in hockey, and that's the, uh, the East Division. Uh, and that, you know, these include the teams of, you know, Washington, Boston, Philadelphia. So, you know, last week I talked about the Washington Capitals and their four Russian players, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Alex Ovechkin, Dmitry Orlov, and uh, Samsonov, Ilya Samsonov in net. Um, you know, drinking in a room together, having a couple of beer. And they, they, um, they all got slapped on the wrist for game uh, ban because of COVID-19 protocols. I haven't actually read that Ilya Samsonov tested positive. I don't know if that's a true story or not. Um, but again, I never read that. I've heard people say that, but normally it's tweeted out by LeBron or Dreger that somebody has been added to the COVID-19 protocol list. And I haven't seen that. So it could be true, but I've, I haven't heard that. Sam Sonov has tested positive. To me, that's not a true story until I see it. So nevertheless, you know, they've been out the last four games. They played, uh, they started with their suspension, started last Friday. They played Buffalo Friday, Sunday, and then they played twice this week against the New York Islanders. And oddly enough, the Washington Capitals are first in the East Division with 13 points. And, you know, they, they've gotten seven out of eight points without you know, their best player in Alex Ovechkin, their second line center in Kuznetsov, their starting goalie in Samsonov, and Dmitry Orlov, a top four defenseman. And it's, you know, beating Buffalo, yeah, you might say, okay, that's not that impressive. But beating the New York Islanders twice in regulation, that that's a really impressive feat for these Washington Capitals. We've seen them have steady goaltending from Vitek Vanacek. I don't think he's the solution long-term, but he's been a great stopgap for them. He's been a solid goaltender and he's given them good minutes. So you can't complain about him. Um, We've seen great outings from the likes of uh, Garnet Hathaway. He stepped up. We've seen uh, Sedano Chara score his first goal last night. Uh, Tom Wilson has contributed. They've had a team effort. You know, Nick Backstrom's played well. But, you know, I predicted this team to win the East Division before the season started. And I thought it would be a dogfight. I was, you know, whoever wins this division, it's going to be a battle because there's a lot of good teams in this. It's why it's the best. It's not the Canadian division. This team has legitimate Stanley Cup contenders in it, a few of them. And for Washington, they've been really impressive. I, I like the way their team plays. They play with a, with a grit, but they also have a ton of skill. And, you know, I think goaltending was a big you know, issue for them coming into the season. Samsonovs are a young goaltender. Could he handle number one duties? That hasn't been proven yet. So they still have that kind of issue to worry to worry about. Um, can he be a number one goaltender on a, on a Stanley Cup winning team? I don't know. He hasn't been through those lumps. Braden Holpe started in the bubble last year. But, you know, Vanacek, 
I don't think they need to worry about backup goaltending. And that's something uh, I think that's been kind of case closed. Craig Anderson's been sitting there. He hasn't even gotten a, a whiff of the net. You know, Vanacek's been solid. And I like the outlook of their team. I think it showed a lot. They, they get seven out of eight points of those players. That's impressive. That's impressive. And the Islanders had a 3 nothing lead last night. Washington comes back and wins 5-3. I think it's the Islanders, one of the stingiest defensive teams in the NHL in the past decade. I mean, it's, it's, it's an impressive feat by these Capitals. And they're playing with confidence. And you can tell they really like playing together. I mean, Big Z scored his first goal last night. He skates right over to the bench. He doesn't – he wants to celebrate with everybody. And it was just a euphoric moment for him. He's out of Boston. It's weird seeing him in, in different colors. But for him just to rejoice with his teammates, this team has a ge- – they gel. And I think Char- adding Char to the mix only helped that. I mean, those Boston teams were tight. Bergeron, Marchand, Chara, Pasternak. They, they were a tight group. And I think it just shows here that, you know, I think Chara really helped mold this team. It was rumored last year that they didn't really take the bubble seriously. They were, you know, drinking and you know, having a good time between games. And then, you know, their effort showed it because they were buried by the Islanders. But I like, I like what Washington's bringing to the table. Obviously, they're first place. I mean, you can't argue with that. And it's not like they're playing lemmings here. They've beaten Philly twice. They've lost to Pittsburgh twice, but they both were in overtime or shootout. They've beaten, uh, they've beaten the Bruins once. They've beaten uh, the Islanders twice. I mean, the, it's it's no cakewalk here, and they're doing it. Um, and you know, right behind them are the Boston Bruins, who were struggling out of the gate. They didn't get a five on five goal until the third game of the year. But since then, they found their stride. I mean, Patrice Bergeron, who's not known to be a goal scorer, already has five goals on the year. I mean, just for reference, Austin Matthews has five goals. Miko Rantanen has five goals. Goal scorers, known goal scorers, he's tied with them for most in the NHL. And Brad Marchand's playing at an MVP level. I think you could argue to start the year he's been the best player in the NHL. And again, I just want to clarify, it does not mean that Brad, I'm not saying Brad Marchand is the best player in the NHL. In a stretch of games, he may have, he may be the best player in the NHL so far this year. He's been dominant, dominant. And does he still dive? Yes. Does he still get people's grill? Whatever people can, people can hate on him for the licking and everything. And that can go with him his whole career, which fine. If that's how you handle it, that, that's okay. But he's still a really good player. That doesn't change the fact that he's a dominant player and he's a top 15, 20 player in the NHL. I mean, he's closer to 10 than he is to 20. I'll say that. I mean, Boston's got two top 15 players with him and Pasternak. And Boston's second in the division without Pasternak. He hasn't played a game yet. David Pasternak is a superstar. And the Bruins, you know, they play Washington for the first time, uh, since Charles' departure, that'll be Saturday. I'm, I'm pumped for that game. I can't wait to watch it. Um, I want to see how Chara handles it. I think he's going to be physical. I don't know if he's going to try to. I don't. He, Chara doesn't try to hurt people. Some people, yes. Can he play? Is he a bit dirty? Yes, I'll admit that. But he doesn't try to hurt people. He plays the game on an edge. He plays. He, he's like he played in Chris Pronger's era. That's what Chris Pronger did. But people seem to forget. I don't know if people just forget that or, you know, Charles, this dirty player, because he's actually a guy who brings some physicality to the game. And he's playing against these small teams in, his, in the normal divisional alignment. And think about it. Playing against Florida, Hoffman, Huberto, these skinnier forward, they small guys. Yeah, he's going to bury them. Of course. Montreal. Montreal was – the little team forever. I mean, Gallagher, you had Drouin, you had Lekkinen. I mean, yeah, Charles is going to bury them. Might it, could the cross check be a bit egregious? Sure, but deal with it. And now I won't even go into Toronto. He terrorized them for years. He scared half the team and they couldn't beat them. I mean, I don't have to go over their history of failing against the Bruins. But yeah, that, that's going to be a great. They play twice. They play 
Saturday and Monday. Those are two must watch games. Uh, two, two of the best teams in the NHL going head to head. And, you know, I, I can skip an all Canadian matchup for that one any day of the week, but both, both these teams have been playing great and they've had reasons to struggle and they haven't. So good, good on them for coming out hot. Third place tied with Boston with 11 points is Philly. Philly's had an up and down start. Um, Played Boston twice. They lost in overtime. They lost 6-1 last Saturday, but they rebounded this week with a pair of wins against New Jersey. Um, You know, Carter Hart hasn't had a great start to the season. Obviously, he had his little meltdown there where he broke his stick, which is fine to me because players do it all the time on the bench and it's never talked about. But the second a goalie breaks a stick, he's an emotional mess. And again, media. Um, But we won't get in. We won't go in down that road today. But Philly's got a really good team. My biggest worry with Philly is can they score? You know, they played their eighth game last night, and Claude Giroux scored his first goal. <sighs> Claude Giroux is a very good player, very good player, but he hasn't been that clutch guy that you need in the playoffs. And I don't know if they have one on their team. They have an older roster, and they're going to rely on the likes of Joel Faraby. Connect. It might have to be Travis Konechny, because I think Konechny. I think they're. I think Philly's best player is Ivan Provorov, probably uh, Hart, maybe but Provorov is right there. But they're going to need – this is a team that's going to need help from the back end. You know, Provorov is going to have to score some goals for them. Uh, Philip Myers is going to have to score some goals. Sandheim is going to have to bring a little bit more offensively. Because Giroux and Vorchek, they're still very good players, but they don't bring it consistently anymore for me. I don't see it night in, night out where they're, they're buzzing. They're around the puck. And – Connect me might have to be that spark plug. They may need a step from Faraby. Scott Lawton might need to raise his game a little bit. Um, you know, these younger guys on their roster are going to have to bring something. Nicholas Obey Kubel, I think, is a guy who has a lot of potential and, and can do some damage if he can find his game. But, you know, Philly's got one of the best goaltending tandems in the NHL with Carter Hurt and Brian Elliott. I mean, Brian Elliott's made two starts, he's got two shutouts. Hard to argue with that. Um, so Philly's going to be fine. I think these three are, you know, it, I had these three all making the playoffs. I mean, it's early on against some, these guys haven't played 10 games yet, but I like, I like them before the season. I still like them. I think Philly, I think Philly is the most upside when it comes to these teams. I think Boston, their depth's a bit challenged. Their defense core with Lausanne, Zaboral, I don't trust them long-term. Uh, their kids. And you don't really want kids playing third line. You need, for me, I'm, I'm an old school in that I like a third line D pair with at least one veteran on it. They have Lozans of Oral who have played a combined less than 35 NHL games together. I don't like that one. I don't love that. So Philly, Philly's got a good roster. They got great goaltending and they could catch fire and go on a deep run, but you know, they've had a good start. They've had their ups and downs like everybody, but They've, they've been consistent. Oh, and I'll mention this throughout the podcast, but Washington's first in the division, they haven't lost in regulation yet. Three overtime or shootout loss, haven't lost in regulation. Right, that's that's impressive to me. When you played eight games, you haven't lost in regulation. I'll mention another team when I get to another division that hasn't done that yet. That hasn't done that yet either, but I think you know who I'm going to talk about. Fourth, so this will be the last playoff spot uh, if, if the season ended today, and that's Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah, you know, they lose to Boston Tuesday night in overtime after the Crosby Latang did their little two on one where I don't know if they were both high or I don't know what the hell they were doing. It was one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Um, you know, Pittsburgh's interesting. I had them I had them in the last spot in the playoffs. And they the Jim Rutherford just stepped down. They have Tristan Jari, Casey DeSmith, and Nets. That's always a question mark because neither of them are proven number ones. Um, you know, obviously they still have Crosby, who's still playing at a very high level. He's still one of the best players in the game. So I have no question marks about Sid. Um, Malkin, I do. He seems uninterested. I don't know. He's he's not giving his, his heart right now. And uh, I think this is – I think he obviously can snap out of it. I mean, Evgeny Malkin is one of the – I mean – they had the hot top 100 players a few years ago. He wasn't on it, which was asinine. 
Uh, I don't know how he wasn't on it, but you know, if he can find his game, Pittsburgh can go to another level. I mean, I, I like the bottom of the roster. I mean, Brandon Tanev is a really underrated player in the NHL. He's a little spark plug that brings it every night. Um, you know, Teddy Bluger is another guy I think is an unsung hero of this team. He's got, he's got two shorthanded goals already this year. He can kill penalties. He's going to play bottom six minutes, but he's effective. T- Tanev is a guy for me that he's a, he's a difference maker because every time he's on the ice, he pisses off the opposition because he's going to hit you. He's going to hit you hard. And he's, he's a mean little bastard. And that's the thing with him. Pittsburgh, their defense core leaves you something to be desired. I mean, p- playing Chad Ruedel night in, night out scares the hell out of me. Playing Cody CC night in, night out scares the hell out of me. Chris Letang is your number one defenseman, worries me. Brian Dumoulin was announced yesterday. He's out week to week. He's their best defenseman. Um, I like Pittsburgh. I think they've had a good start. I mean, they beat Washington twice, so props. But again, they lose to Boston twice here. But I'm not going to bet against Sid not to make the playoffs. I think he can find enough with this group, and maybe they'll make some additions. But with Jim Rutherford, this organization could shift dramatically uh, with the new whoever the new GM is, and you know his his ideas and how he sees this roster. So it could be Mike Sullivan out the door at the end of the. There's a lot of ways this could this could go, but Pittsburgh, they've had an okay start, and you know they're they're good. Now to finish out the bottom four, it's interesting. You know, fifth is Buffalo. They're a point back at Pittsburgh. They've been in a lot of games. Uh, they've lost to Washington three times in overtime or the shootout. Uh, they've they've lost to the rain. They lost the Rangers last night in overtime. You know, they've been involved in games. They've been close. We've seen uh, Eichel pick up his game. I mean, I, lo- I really like Victor Olafson. Um, Taylor Hall's had an okay start. Sam Reinhardt's had a really good start to the season. But Buffalo is a team that it's going to battle. You know, they got Olmark and Hutton and Net, which isn't great, but they're both stable. Um, they have tons of scoring. Their back end, you know, Ristolainen. I like their back end more than I thought I would. Ristolainen, Colin Miller, you know, Darlene. So they they have some guys that that I like, and I think they can push. But they're in a tough division, and you got to beat some of these big boys. You got some games. You got to get off Boston. You got to get some points off Pittsburgh you, for them to make it. They're going to have to, because there's too many good teams and they're going to get leapfrogged, but they've, they've had an okay start to the year. They're then followed by New Jersey. I mean, New Jersey has been kind of hitting the skids here, but the start of the year, they're one of the hottest teams beating Boston uh, early on in the year uh, twice to play four times already. They beat them twice. And, you know, Mackenzie Blackwood's been solid in it. Scott Wedgwood, who they got off waivers, has been good in that. Um, but I don't trust them long term. I don't think they're, you know, I think they're the bottom team in this division. I mean, they're playing PK Subban like 27 a minute, 27 minutes a night right now. I don't have a whole lot of trust that PK Subban is going to make a big difference on this team. I mean, if he's playing that many minutes, you're in trouble. I like Damon Severson. I think he's a, a guy who could be a number one defenseman in this league. Uh, Jack Hughes has had a, a great – Ty Smith is another guy who I said they should play to get minutes. He has. He's been a point getter for them. So New Jersey's got some promising prospects, but, again, in a tough division, I think they'll slow down here. Now, the seventh team is the, is the biggest surprise. It's the New York Islanders. Now – I did have the Islanders missing the playoffs. I remember me and Seamus did this divisional breakdown. He was like, why are you crazy? And I just think they play such a defensive style and they do it very effectively. But teams that usually play that, that system where it's defensive, 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 it usually breaks down after a couple of years. They can't do it anymore. Matt Barzell, I don't think, loves the system that he plays in. Um, you know, I was talking to Craig Eagles about Noah Dobson. Maybe he said he doesn't get the opportunities that he would get elsewhere, which I think he's right. But playing Dobson right now, I don't think he's NHL ready. Um, you know, they got Nick Letty, Andy Gre- They lose Devon Taves on the back end, which is a huge loss for them. Uh, he's a great defenseman. He's in Colorado doing good things there. Um, 
but they don't have the scoring ability. You know, John Gabriel Pajo hasn't had a great start to the year. Uh, you know, on, they need Brock Nelson, Anders Lee, Barzell, Everly to be nightly contributors, and they haven't. You know, Everly's got two goals. They both came in the same game. And you know, three nothing lead last night, and you blow it to Washington. That can't happen. You you need to bring it. And I think they will. I think they'll get better before as the season goes along here. But you don't want to go too long before you find it because they have six points. Washington is thirteen right now. You want to find your game quick because you get too far behind, then you're chasing it a whole year and you're done before you know it. So the Islanders, the biggest, their goaltending hasn't been great. And they may have to play a little bit more free with the likes of Barzell and the speedy, you know, uh, Beauvillier. Because some of these teams are just going to break through that defensive wall. Um, and maybe they, maybe their game will be better when the game gets tighter. We're still seeing a lot of poor defensive play, poor systems. That's still happening a ton. Just watch the Edmonton Oilers. Uh so, you know, they could definitely try. I think they'll get better as the season goes along, but they've had a, they've had an ugly start. I mean, let's be honest here. Then bottom of the pack uh, is the New York Rangers with five points. They were really struggling, really struggling. They pick up a win last night against Buffalo. But, yeah, they, they were losing every night. Some of the games weren't that close. Shesterkin hasn't been a great start the year, letting in some soft goals. Um, the biggest news for them last night is Alexi Lafreniere. He scored the overtime winner. It's his first career NHL goal. I'm sure the, you know, the monkey's off the, off his back, but he's really been invisible in his first six games. He hasn't done anything. Uh, his first point, first goal, so congratulations to him. But you know, the likes of Panarin, Brian Strom, they're big boys. Zabinijad has had a cold start after you know a 40-goal campaign last year. They need these guys to be big-time contributors. Adam Fox on the back end. It's not on Lafreniere to be the hero here. And I think the Rangers are a good young up and coming team, but again, they're going to be, they're going to be overlooked and they're going to be passed by the likes of the top four that I mentioned, because they're, they're just better than them right now. They got more experience. They're better than them, but I don't think the Rangers are going to come in last. And I'd be shocked if they did like they have too much talent. You know, they're better than New Jersey. And we'll see what happens, but you know, the Rangers have had a tough start and we'll see where this takes them. But uh, uh, yeah, they, they need to find it too, to stay in it. It's five. Again, they are eight points behind Washington already five points or four points behind Pittsburgh. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a battle. I think this division is unquestioned the best division in hockey, uh, I'm going to read a tweet later in the next division about who's the best team in the next division that I read last night. And I, to me, it's the best division in hockey by, by country mile. So um, we'll go to the Canadian division next. And this, I read an interesting tweet from six, six zero from Tim and said last night, he wrote Montreal is the best team in the Canadian division. And I don't even think it's debatable. I agree. I agree. I normally don't agree with him. I think a lot of his tweets are stupid, but I, I agree with him. Um, Montreal has been, is the best team in the Canadian division to start the year. And I think, you know, Mark Bergevin gets buried a lot when things aren't going well. You got to give him credit here. He, he built a roster. He built a team. And I don't think a lot of general managers do this. Uh, they, George McPhee did it. And Kelly McCrimmon did it in Vegas. They got a team. They don't have a whole lot of superstars in that team. Guess what? They got a nucleus that can win. Montreal built a team. If you look at their roster, they, they're they so deep. I mean, they, Toffoli has two shorthanded. Montreal has five shorthanded goals already this year. Five in seven games. They had six all of last year. In 71, they, the likes of Toffoli, Josh Anderson, the unicorn, Tatar is playing really good hockey. Joel Armia, Romanoff, Joel Edmondson has been a great addition to that team. 
Jake Allen, 2-0 in his two starts. They're, they have a team. Jake Evans is their fourth line center. I mean, Lekkonen, they just they have a roster where they have players playing where they should. Everybody's pos- they're positioned well. And they beat Calgary again last night, 4-2. Should have been 4 nothing. Let two goals in the last two minutes. But Montreal dominated Calgary last night. They dom- they dominated Vancouver. They threw a game away against Toronto. Props to the least. They capitalized on that opportunity. But, you know, they played seven games. They got 12 points. Toronto's played nine. They got 14. So two games in hand, Montreal's right th- they're They're better than Toronto right now. And again, what I'm saying is subject to change. But the difference between past years and this year for Montreal is they have a nucleus of a team that they didn't have before. They've gotten off to hot starts where Max Domi is playing fantastic. Well, they don't need to rely on one line to score tonight because Toffoli is not going to have this year the whole year. But Gallagher can, is going to chip in. Thomas Tatar is going to chip in. Josh Anderson is going to chip in. They have their back end. I mean, Shea Weber scores again last night. Jeff Petrie, Kulak. They're so well positioned. I mean, they have the best goaltender in the NHL since uh, still. So, and, you know, comparing them to the Leafs, I think the Leafs have played fantastic to start this year. And I'll be I, the Leafs. I, I'll be. I mean, I'll be on. I like to pick on the Leafs because they get too much media attention. Point blank, teams that get a lot of media attention that don't deserve it bother me, because in my life, you earn the attention you get. You have to earn it, or you know, the money you get, you earn. Toronto doesn't earn the media attention. The Dallas Cowboys don't earn the media attention. These teams that get it never win. The Los, Angeles Dodge, uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers finally won after 30 years, okay? You can talk about them now. They're the reigning champions. But they haven't won in 50 years. Do we have to talk about them every day for on hours on end at ad nauseum? To me, you don't. You can talk about the teams that win and, and are competitive. That's more interesting to me. But... I got to give them credit. I think Austin Matthews has been one of the better, best players in the NHL to start the year. I haven't seen him have a bad game yet. He missed one. So they played nine. He's played eight. He's buzzing. Every time he's got the puck, he's making stuff happen. He's got five goals. He's definitely a favorite to win the Rocket Richard, especially with Pashnak out, having not, not played yet, and Ovechkin serving his suspension. I mean, he'd be the favorite for sure. Um, and you know, I think their goaltending's been solid. Jack Campbell's two starts, but Freddie, ever since that, the first couple games, he's been good. Um, I, I like, I think Muzzin and Hall is their best defensive pair. I, I don't love Riley. Never been a huge Morgan Riley fan. I think, and that could just be because Toronto puts him in a bad position where he's the number one defenseman on the team, and he's not a number one defenseman, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I think they need to work on that. But, you know, they've been getting good goal. I mean, they Jason Spezza, who's been getting kicked in the junk for about three weeks here, he had two points last night in a minute and a half ice time. First period, a goal assist, minute and a half ice time. I'm not kidding. Look it up. They've been getting depth, you know. I think a huge key for Toronto, and I think that adding to this, I think they may t- need to make two additions, and they could be – Fringe Stanley Cup contenders. I'm still not going to put them right up there because there's a lot better teams in Toronto. Sorry. Um, they need to update the need to upgrade their third line center. Kerfoot? No, no, no. Doesn't do it for me. I don't know what he does well. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't penalty kill well. He doesn't take face offs well. He. He just. He's eh. He's there. I think he better suited as a winger because he's too thin. He's too weak to play center. They need to upgrade that position and they need to upgrade. They need to get another defenseman and that's a broken record, but Dermot or Lettinen or Sand for all the least sense clamoring, we need to see Rasmus Sandin. I saw him last year. There's a reason he's not playing. He's not that good. Uh, 
So upgrade the bottom six, I think Bogosian and another defenseman, they'd be fine. Um, but Toronto's an impressive, I mean, they're seven and two. They got 14 points. They've had a great start to the year and they're a legitimate threat to, to win the Canadian division and make it to the conference final, no doubt. So kudos to them. Tied with uh, a couple points back of uh, uh, Montreal is Winnipeg. They've got 10 points. Uh, I like Winnipeg a ton. I think they've had a solid start to the year. They got losses to Toronto and they lost to Edmonton at the last at the at the buzzer. But they're a team that can come back. I mean, they played Edmonton the other night. They come back, score five goals in the third period. They've added Pierre Luc Dubois, still going through that 14 day quarantine and all that bullshit. Um, but they got Connor Hellebuck. He's one of the better goaltenders in the NHL. I think their defense core could be upgraded. But their center ice position is as deep as anybody in hockey. They're tough. Mark Shifley doesn't get the notoriety that the likes of, you know, Mitch Marner and Bill Nylander get because of the aforementioned media attention. But he's a stud. I mean, Mark, he's so good. Uh, Kyle Connor is another guy that never gets discussed. And he's one of the better. He's such a, he's such a good player. Such a good player. Adam Lowry. Tough as hell. He, gives it, he, he brings it every game. He can, he can score goals. This is the thing I love about players. A guy that can score a goal, kill penalties, or kick your ass, and he can do it all in one game. That's Adam Lowry. And you know, they got it. I, think when, I pick Winnipeg to win the Canadian division. They're four points back at Toronto. I'm not going to back off that after a month. But you know, I think they've had a solid start. Um, obviously, they've gotten three wins against Ottawa. But you know, a lot, Vancouver did that too, and they're right behind them. So Vancouver has 10 points. They played 10 games. Winnipeg's played seven and they have equal points with Vancouver. You know, this week has really, you know, they look a lot better this week because they played Ottawa three times and Ottawa, whew, Ottawa is in trouble right now. Deep trouble after this tough road trip and the way they've been playing hockey. I mean, they're, whew, it looks ugly there, but you know, credit to Vancouver. You can only beat who's on your schedule. They beat Ottawa three times. 7-1, 4-1, uh, Wasn't close, at least for their goaltending. I think it's a positive. They can get some confidence. Uh, Thatcher Demko made two of the three starts, and he made uh, like 82 of the 84 shots he faced. He's, he's saved. So good confidence for him. Uh, I think they, they played Winnipeg on Saturday. I think it'll be an interesting game to see what they got in the tank against a legitimately you know good team, what, what they can bring. We've seen them, their depth start to score. Brandon Sutter had a hat trick the other night. Uh, Tyler Mott has four or five goals already this year. Uh, you know, Jake Vertanen's bringing nothing to the table, which doesn't surprise me. Um, but you know, they got they got some pieces there that um, that that are promising. So Vancouver, they played a lot of games, more than you know, one more than Toronto and three more than Winnipeg and uh, Montreal. But you know, they're in it. They're in it for sure. Um, excuse me. That brings us to Edmonton. Whew. Um, Edmonton. Yeah. It's, uh, it's ugly in Edmonton. They got six points, but. Whew. Edmonton just likes to throw games away. If I'm being completely honest. Um, the last night they should have beat Toronto. I watched the whole game. If you really think about it, if you watch the game, you, fundamentally, they're terrible. And they're in trouble because Koskinen's had to play every game they've had this year because Mike Smith's on IR. That's on Kenny Holland. You bring back Mike Smith and Koskinen as your goaltending. General manager, you can't bring back a dinosaur who's been long in the tooth for about three years now. I mean, Koskinen, who people think is a starter, he isn't, he isn't a starter. He's a fucking mess. Um but, you know, Connor McDavid, where have you been? I think he's had a really slow start to the year. I don't think he's been that electric. First period, I thought he played really well against Toronto last night. After that, I was like, okay, are you going to do anything? I mean, Dreisaitl has been the better player. And that's not, I don't think that's debatable. Um, you know, he, he single-handedly almost beat Toronto last night because he was playing with nothing. Their, their depth. I mean, they got Nygaard and these 
Jujar Kara playing bottom six, and they bring nothing. Their defense core sucks. I mean, they, they're they're a mess. I mean, they're you look at it, they're eight points behind Toronto already for top in the division. That's tough. It's tough to they play Toronto again Saturday. That's an important game for them to to win, obviously, just to get some confidence and to not go zero and four against Toronto to start the year. But also, can I say I this divisional format? I'm fine with it, but. Seeing Toronto Edmonton play four times in 10 days is, ugh. If you're a Leafs fan, do you like this? I guess your team's winning, so you might like it. But these two teams playing each other when they had nothing physically and it's just, there's no bitterness, nothing. Mm. Anyway. Find them, Calgary. Calgary hasn't played as many games, but, you know, they've lost three in a row, losing twice to Toronto and then losing to Montreal last night. You know, they look good, and then they play the two best teams in the division. So they're kind of getting exposed. I think Calgary, Calgary, Vancouver, and Edmonton are all, they're all the same. I think they're one of them's going to make the playoffs. I don't know who's going to. I picked Edmonton before the season. I think they can find it, but I think Edmonton, Calgary, when a, uh, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver are all the same. The, the Alberta, British Columbia teams, there. None of them are great. Maybe Calgary has a slight edge because they have Markstrom that could push them into that four spot. But, you know, they started Dave Riddick last night and he was a mess. Um, so Edmonton, Calgary, yeah, they need to find their game here. I think it, for Vancouver, at least they can say, well, we won three in a row. But we'll, we'll see what they can bring against Winnipeg. And I mentioned the last, last team division to Ottawa. DJ Smith's coaching his ass off. And the fact that he, there was a report that he's on the hot seat is idiotic. I mean, he's got a young team. Thomas Shabbat has not had a good start to the year. You're looking at the, like, I mean, Colin White's a guy they wanted to take a step forward. They've had to healthy scratch him because he's, his efforts just that porous. Um, they just don't, they don't have, they're young. And I like that he's protecting his younger players. You know, the veterans like Stepan and Nisimov, these guys haven't been bringing it. And they're going to continue to lose unless they see a change in the way they play. And it, it's going to be a struggle for, for Ottawa all year. Because like I mentioned yesterday, every game this year, they're going into the game, the, the worst team. Like normally, if they play Detroit tonight, guess what? They'd be the favorite. But they're playing Toronto. They're playing Winnipeg, Vancouver. They're they're not going to be the favorite in that game, so it's going to be tough for them. Maybe because they're in a tough spot, they get a better draft pick, and that's better for them long term. That's the best thing they can hope for right now. Uh, but it's going to be a tough season for Ottawa for sure. Moving to the Central Division, aka the COVID Division, as I like to call it. You know, they've had teams that have hardly played any games. I mean, first in the, in the division is Columbus. They, they've got nine points in eight games, which is not that impressive. Uh, you know, they, their goaltending's been suspect. They haven't been able to score goals. Um, they've won two in a row, both games going to overtime or a shootout. So they've got that going for them. But obviously they're awaiting Patrick Laine's, uh He's going to join the lineup here, so maybe this weekend. Um, he's still dealing with some immigration issues, I think. So he'll have to get to Columbus and moving to the States. You only have to quarantine for 48 hours. So different from the 14 days in Canada. Uh, yeah. Got to love that rule. Um, but yeah, Columbus, they haven't been that impressive. But then we move down the list. Second in the division, eight points is Dallas. They played four games, four because all the COVID issues they've had, they're going to have to play something like 56 games, 52 games in a hundred days or something, something crazy like that. They're literally playing every other day. This division, these teams are going to be wiped. Maybe that helps the other teams when it, when it gets to the playoffs, because they're going to be exhausted. Um, What can you say about Dallas? I mean, they've won every game they played. So kudos. I mean, they've beaten Detroit here a couple of times, but they beat Nashville over the weekend and they're not in a strong division. Um, you know, they got, you know, Florida isn't a strong team. Nashville is not a strong team. Uh, I think Carolina is one of the better teams. And they're in the bottom. Detroit's terrible. Um, but, you know, Dallas, 
I still think they have some of that winning pedigree. You know, Jamie Ben, they got Antion Hudobin in that, who's had a really solid start to the year. And but we'll see. Like I said, they're gonna be playing a lot of games. They're gonna have to rely on Jake Ottinger and Net as their backup goaltender because of Ben Bishop being injured. But you know, Dallas, I don't think should have a huge problem making the playoffs in this division because, like I said, it's just not that strong. Uh, third place right now, tied with Dallas, but Nashville's got eight points in seven games. None of the, none of these teams have gotten off to good starts. I mean, eight points in seven games. Come on. Uh, you know, they're Nashville, they got an old team. They still got Johansson kicking around. They got rid of Torres last year. They, they got Yossi in the back end, Ekholm, Ryan Ellis, which I like. Soros and Rene and Net. If, um, they just, their team, I think, can hang around. I think they might finish fifth or sixth in this division. I don't think they'll make the playoffs. But they're going to give you an effort every night, so I appreciate that, you know. Rocco Grimaldi, you know, these guys, they play hard. Uh, Victor Arvidsson, they have guys that can score and that will give you an honest effort every night. So that's the best thing I can really say about Nashville is that they're not a team that's going to quit. And, you know, they got Dante Fabro that they're going to take a good look at this year as a guy that they're hoping can emerge as a top four defenseman. So Nashville, okay start. Again, not a great team full of a division of not great teams. They're followed by Florida. They play four games. Uh, they play. They got seven points in four games, and Tampa's right behind them. They play five games. They got seven points. You know, Florida. Florida took a really big step back on paper. I mean, Lewis lost Mike Hoffman, lost Dadnoff, um, two two guys who scored uh, thirty and twenty six goals last year respectively for them. They got a lot younger. They still have Barkoff and Huberto, but. You know, the key for Florida in making the playoffs is Sergey Bobrovsky. Can he bring it night in, night out? Last year, he was a nightmare. I mean, but I, I think they played, the start of the year, they played better than I thought they would. They lose last night to Columbus in a shootout, but they play competitive games. Obviously, they've only played four. And I think the team teams might make the playoffs in this division because how you handle the war of attrition. Can your team physically handle it? How bad are, is the injury situation going to be? Um, can your goaltending hold up? They got Chris Drieger as a backup. Can he play significant games with a whole bunch of back-to-backs on their horizon? So that, that'll be interesting. Um, Tampa Bay, uh, you know, they play five games, seven points. Not, not a fantastic start. I have no worries about Tampa Bay. I don't, no, not a worry in the world about Tampa Bay. I'm sure that that'll be a story. Uh, you know, Toronto's got seven more points in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Okay. Next, next question. You know, on to Cincinnati. They're still the best team in the NHL. And I don't, it, it's undisputed right now. I mean, they're running cup champs. They still have Braden Point. They still have Stamkos. I mean, they had, I watched a lot. I watched most of that game last night, Tampa Bay, Carolina. I think both teams are quite good. Um, Carolina winning one nothing in overtime, but I think both of those teams who have both haven't played many games. I think both of them are really good. Carolina's only played four games, six points, but I like I like both those teams to make the playoffs, and that'd be a fun playoff series after last night's game. Martin Netcash gets the game winner for Carolina, but you know Dougie Hamilton's a fun player to watch. I think Jake Gardner's actually he played well last night. Um, you got Hamilton, you got Pesci. Slavin when you can come back healthy. Tampa Bay, they're locked and loaded. So I I like um both these teams. Obviously, they're both bottom of the division right now, but I mean nine points, Columbus. You can catch them. Tampa's got seven. They can catch them tonight. You know, the next game they play, they tie them. So um bottom of the division, Detroit. I mean, Detroit, Chicago, they're they're bad. They're bad. Uh, Chicago, I watched that game last Sunday just because I have no life, and I was like, okay, well, this is on TV. It's ugly. It's ugly, these two teams. Um, uh, both of them, I think, will be picking in the top five or six picks in this draft, uh, and it, especially Detroit. I mean, they've had a, they had a decent start, and then they start to lose a little bit here. I don't, I don't see them making a drastic 
increase in play and they don't have the talent to do it. So yeah, Detroit, they're not, they're not really a threat uh, to anybody right now. So that brings us to the West division. And there's really three teams in this division that I think are Stanley cup threats. And I mentioned, you know, East being the toughest division. This certainly isn't the toughest division, but when it comes to three elite teams in it, I think it has the three best teams in one division. If you look at the, if you look at Vegas, Colorado, St. Louis, they're, they're the elite teams. Uh, I think they're, you know, St. Louis obviously winning the cup two years ago, Vegas conference final last year, Stanley cup final the year prior, Colorado knocked down the door of, you know, Stanley cup fame here, but Vegas is first in the division right now with 11 points, one point up in Colorado, but the biggest, I mentioned Montreal as a team. Vegas is the most balanced team in the NHL. I mean, Petrangelo, Fedor, White Cloud, Martinez on the back end, they, they're they loaded. Pacioretty, you got Marcheseau, Riley Smith, William Carlson, Mark Stone, uh, Nosek, Ryan Reeves, William Carrier. They have a team that is four line. It's it's an attack lineup with two goaltenders that could be number ones that are playing, you know, splitting duty right now in Robin Leonard and Marc-Andre Fleury. And they're they're just so deep. I think they're they're just built as a team, not as a group of individuals, which some teams have done and it hasn't worked out for them. I like the way Vegas has shaped their team. And for me, it's such a balanced lineup that, that can any line can score at any given time. And that's the most dangerous thing about Vegas is that they're, they're dangerous. And right behind them is Colorado. Colorado had a tough start. They're five and three in eight games. But um, the biggest problem for me for Colorado is goaltending. I think mean, Grubauer's been good to start these five and two. They don't have a backup goalie, Frank Coos and Kozar. I think they started to, I think they need to, again, Colorado gets a starting goaltender. They could, they, they might win the Stanley Cup. They'd probably be the favorite if they get a, a really good starting goaltender. But Grubauer cannot win a cup. He's not. And in the West, to get out of this division, you need good goaltending. And you're not beating Vegas with these guys. You're not. You're not beating St. Louis with Grubauer in that, in my opinion. Um, but you know, Colorado, McRantanen has had a great start to the year. You know, McKinnon's looked pretty good. Kadri had three points last night. He's obviously an X factor. He's in the last year of his deal, so interesting to see what they do with him. They've added uh, Devon Taves to their back end. Ryan Graves is back there. They added Brandon Saad, who I think has actually been a really good addition. Zadorov was good for them, but Sods look good um, in a Colorado uniform. And they just they have a good team. They're balanced. You know, Ryan Gray's in the back end is one of the more consistent uh, defensemen in the NHL and just breaking pucks out and being in the right place at the right time. Kale McCarr has had a really good start leading all defensemen in points already this year. Uh, they're loaded and they're right there with Vegas, but they need a goaltender. And Maybe it's going to be a team that falls off. Maybe a team in the Canadian division that's there's not really a goal team. No. Um, I don't know who they're going to grab. It's going to be tough, but maybe you, you lure Jonathan Quick out of LA. Maybe. Is he what he used to be? No, but he's better than what you got. Could you pull off a mega deal for John Gibson in Anaheim? Tough. They're in the same division. But they're not in a normal season. Next year, they won't be in the same division. Colorado will be back in the central. The, the real central. So you don't play each other as much. It's interesting food for thought here. Third, divi- for third in the division right now, above St. Louis, is Minnesota. You know, Minnesota... Give them credit. You know, they've beaten the lesser teams in the division, the Anaheims and the LA's, but they've won their games that they've had to. Like Kuro Kaprazov has been really impressive to start the year. Their goaltending has been solid. Uh, Cam Talbot 
has looked pretty good for them. And uh, Alex Stalock behind him. But they don't have the nucleus to win a bunch of games, especially the top three teams. I, maybe they can get the four spot. Um, I think they could maybe get the four spot. But with you got Arizona, San Jose, uh, Anaheim, and L.A. But all those four teams aren't great. Like Arizona and Minnesota are going to have a dogfight for that last spot. Um, Arizona – Darcy Kemper, when he finds his game, I think they can propel. Uh, they got you know, Connor Garland, who's played pretty well. Chichikran's actually had a good start to the year. They, Phil Kessel has had a good start to the year. If they get Barrett Hayton get going a little bit, I think they can, you know, obviously missing their captain, Ekin Larson, I think they can find their game and be better than Minnesota because I think they're a bit deeper. You know, pre, relying on Parise, he's getting older. He's not the player he used to be. They... Minnesota just doesn't have, I don't think, the, the talent to do it. Um, another team maybe that could push into that four spot is San Jose. I, I don't have a lot of faith in saying that, but they have they still have good players. Couture, Hurdle, Brent Burns is playing okay. Vlasic, I wouldn't want on my team. Their goaltending is questionable. But then again, above, below these top three teams, it's a really weak division. Um, and you know, L.A., is is young you know Gabriel Velarde has been one of their better players offensively they still have Drew Doughty they 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 still have the new a lot of the old players that won cups with them with Jeff Carter uh Dustin Brown but they're a team that's slower in a game that's only getting faster year by year and you know it's clearly been evident for them but they got some younger guys you know Sean Walker has, has played pretty well for them on the back end but now, Anaheim, LA, LA, they're relying on these players to take a step forward. Maxim Comtra to play better. I have Troy Terry, Sam Steele in Anaheim. But I think Minnesota and San Jose, Arizona are teams that could get that last spot and potentially do something with it. But we'll see. Uh, they, I picked Arizona before the year, and I, I like them a little bit more than the other, the other two at this point. And then we got St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis – you know, with Vegas, Colorado, St. Louis kind of gets forgotten. But, you know, they still have a very good roster with David Perron, with Ryan O'Reilly, with Braden Shen, with uh, Colt Pareko. Tory Krug's had a pretty good start to the year moving over from Boston. They still got Bennington back there. Um, St. Louis is a really good team. And I think, you know, they beat Vegas the other night. They were supposed to play last night. But the game was canceled because Vegas has had some COVID uh, complications. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, these three teams are all Stanley Cup threats and only one's going to come out of this division. Think about it that way. Only one team is coming out of this. Vegas, Colorado, St. Louis. Normally it's two. I think these three teams, I think uh, with the West, the way it is, they meet one, the two, two of these three meet in the conference final right now, for sure. For sure. I mean, Na Nashville, look over there, Nashville. No, I mean, two of, the, two of these three are meeting the conference final. Not Edmonton, not Vic, I mean, no, no way now. Maybe Winnipeg, maybe, but, you know, that's just the way this division's working this year. So, but St. Louis still has a lot to bring. And it, these three teams all year are going to be linked. Obviously, they're in the same division, and that'll be probably the most compelling playoffs is – these three and how, and how it works and who comes out of it. But yeah, that's kind of where, where the divisions stand. Um, it's, it's very close right now. in a lot of the divisions, there's been some good hockey. Um, only one game tonight, which is asked. I don't know why uh, Columbus, Chicago tonight. So I'll be watching it, but uh, yeah, that, that's it for today. But tonight, actually uh, it's going to be the start of a new show that I'm doing with with Craig Eagles, who I've had on the show before, it's going to be on the uh, FDS podcast network. So give that, go give that a follow on Facebook and you can join us uh, every, it's going to be tonight. We're doing it at eight o'clock. So eight o'clock tonight, it's going to be uh, live. You can join us. You can write in the comments, let us know what you think, uh, questions you might have. Um, and we're just going to be, we're going to do about a half hour show twice a week where we talk about NHL issues and headlines. And, um, should be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to try to 
include as many teams as possible. This is not going to be, you know, the average, you know, hockey central at noon where one, one team is discussed for the whole show. We're going to go around the NHL, let you guys know what, what's happening. Kind of like what I, what I like to do here. And um, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good stories out there that, that need to be told. So um, that should be fun. We're going to try to do that twice a week, potentially Mondays and Fridays as of right now, but I'll keep you posted on that. Tomorrow I'll be joined by Dawson Mormon, my friend. We'll talk about the, um, the, 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 the awards in the NHL, who we see winning each award uh, and how that shapes out at the end of the year and also the teams that we've really liked so far this year. So that should be fun tomorrow. But yeah, two, two shows coming, obviously one tonight, one tomorrow. So a lot of, a lot of content coming here to the point. But uh, everybody, hope you guys can tune in this weekend. It should be fun. But uh, either way, have a great weekend. Stay safe and uh, we'll talk soon.